to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society rejects, Stormy Willow welcomes you. We are the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, dabblers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's that's, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Welcome to the Stormy Willow Podcast. I'm your host, Adele, along with my sister, Sarah. And this is your podcast for all things paranormal, spooky, and just plain weird. Woo! Hey, Adele! Hey, how's it going? Oh, it is going. <laughs> in the day. Yeah, oh. well, we decided to record in the middle of the week instead of the weekend, so this will be interesting. Coming right out of work and recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're well, like I've slammed on brakes and I'm switching gears. So bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But um, you know, what a what a treat though to be able to hear a spooky story on a Wednesday, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a fun way to break up the week, I suppose, and uh you know, get my mind off of dashboards and data sets. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So it, it'll hopefully be... I, I've got a good one today, so I'm really excited about it. Ooh, so cool. how's your week going? So far, so good. Um, Not much going on. Just work, work, work. I know. Adult night. Yeah. It's not as fun as I thought it would be. Yeah. But it's like the worst one I thought it would be. <laughs> it's like, we, for the last year, we've been in like a lull of like shows that we regularly watch but now we kind of have some on Thursdays again so we have Fast Foodies season 2 started <laughs> that's just like light and easy to watch it's, I think I mentioned it another time but it's like these chefs that try to reproduce um, our fast food favorite of a guest celebrity oh so like gosh. I don't know Fortune Feimster was on there and she wanted them to do like the I think sweet and sour like Panda Express <laughs> chicken so then they Heck had to yeah. reproduce it and then the next round they like elevate it to be like a five star I bet she yeah. was a treat <laughs> oh, I love like, chicken <laughs> uh, it's a fun show but um, that's pretty awesome I remember I used to always look forward to Thursday night comedy night so it was like Parks and Rec and The Office and yeah. you know just kind of like easing into the weekend <laughs> it's kind of funny because like uh, Fast Foodies is light and funny and then our next show that we've been really into watching is Twisted uh, Killers <laughs> like, <gasps> right after that. So then it kind of takes a turn. <laughs> yeah, it does take a turn. Yeah, I like to keep my Thursdays nice and light, you know. But now I don't really have anything. Like, I mean, pretty much it's just like I rewatched um, Raising Hope, which was good. Uh, but I don't really Jeez, have anything. I haven't thought about that show in here. It's a great one. It was a nice just kind of make you laugh. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about rewatching Buffy the Vampire. Yeah, that would be a good one. I haven't watched that in years. Just a, you know, grimness. <laughs> exactly. I know it. Well, uh, speaking of stories, I'm really excited to tell you guys why. I thought you were going to say speaking of vampire slayers. Speaking of vampire slayers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm really excited to do this story because this one comes from a listener of ours. Um, really? So we have listeners? We have a listener named Steven. You may know him. Uh, He's my husband, your brother-in-law, and he's like, he was listening to the podcast. He's like, hey, I have an idea. Like, why don't you do a haunted place, like somewhere that's haunted? And so I'm like, okay, I can do that. And so um, I ended up finding um, a hotel in my favorite city, which is no other than New York. I love New York City. And so this is called, this is about the Hotel Chelsea or the Chelsea Hotel. Or just the Chelsea. Have you ever heard of it? Is it in Chelsea? <laughs> it is in Chelsea. Okay. No, I have not heard of it though. Uh, I um I had not really either. And when I started um doing my research, like I've got twelve pages of stuff. That Whoa! How old is this hotel? Is it even that old? So yeah, this I'm going to tell you all about it. So um so this um 
you like just Google the Chelsea Hotel. You have to be careful. I did that, and there's like a Marriott now that's also called that, and that is not the same Chelsea okay. Hotel that I'm talking about. I'm googling so, it now called the Hotel Chelsea, and as I said, it's also known as the Chelsea Hotel, or you can just say the Chelsea, and it's located in the beautiful Manhattan, New York, and it was built in 1883 through 1885, and it is located on 222 West and 23rd Street between 7th and 8th Avenues in the neighborhood of Chelsea. Oh, it's cool. Isn't it cool? Yeah, it kind of has like, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it looks really nice. Like, it kind of has, like, a 1920s part. Yeah, like, it does, even though it's built in the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really oh, nice. It's very beautiful, and it's been known as one of the last Bohemian hotels, and that's because a n- numerous and numerous of writers, musicians, and artists, and actors have come through this hotel. And what is, what is the Bohemian? You know, like, just like Bohemian kind of vibe, like the artsy, boho. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm not cool enough to know what that is. <laughs> but, um, so it no longer accepts long-term residents. You can't live there anymore like you used to. Like, you used to be able to live in the hotel, or you could check in, check out. Um, so it's been, I'm just going to do, like, a real quick summary, and then I'm going to break it down for you. So just hang on tightly here with me. Um. So, like I said, they no longer accept long-term residents, but it's still home to many who um, lived there before that policy changed. So, you still do have some residents that do still live there um, because they were kind of grandfathered in. Okay. That, that's false. And so, some of its famous um, tenants are Arthur C. Clark, who um, wrote the 2001 Faith Odyssey. Sorry. Uh, I'm, like, resetting. Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> I just like uh, reset this old computer and I've been letting it run all day and now it's trying to like set up the oh microphone and the saying, get out! How can the you hear that? Get out and I'm mean, get out. Get out. <laughs> so, um, so one of the famous tenants is Arthur C. Clarke. He wrote um, 2001 A Space Odyssey while he was staying there at the Chelsea. Poets Allen Ginsberg and Gregory Corso chose it as a place for a physical, uh, um, an artistic exchange. It's also known um, where Dylan Thomas was staying in room 205, where he became ill and then was hospitalized with pneumonia and later died. And um, on November 9th, um, where Nancy Spungen, girlfriend of Sid, the Sex Pistols, was found stabbed to death in 1970. Ooh. Dylan's hang on, is that, that. Like, so, I mean, it is obsessed with, um, the movie Dangerous Minds. Is that um, the, the Dylan Dylan contest? Is it Dylan Thomas? Is he a writer? Dylan Thomas is a writer. Or, okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Um, and so Nancy and, um, Sid from Sex Pistols, that's like where she was found stabbed to death and then he later died of an overdose in the same okay. place. That sounds like it could be its own story. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is just, like, one ring. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and there have been, like, a lot of, like, movies and books and stuff about that. Um, it has been designated as um, a New York City landmark, and it's been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1977. So, um, just to kind of tell you the dark history of it, of, like, the death and everything that has happened, and then we're going to get into the actual, like, ghost encounters that people have had there. So we're going to start at the very beginning. So the Chelsea, um, in 1912, the Titanic survivors um, were briefly stayed in that hotel because it was close to um, the Chelsea Pier. And so whenever we went to New York City, we stayed at the Jane Hotel, who also housed survivors of the Titanic. And it was eerie as fuck. I loved it. it was I bet awesome. that was like super heavy energy. It was, and you could feel it. It, like, it, was, it was a. I love staying at the Jane, but so also people stay here at the Chelsea as well. And so the first noted thing that death that we know that takes place there is um, in 1908, a society gal, her name was Amara Wilcox, died of an overdose sleep medication there. 
And um, they said it was probable suicide. So that was our first death that we know about. The following year, Frank Kavecki blew his brains out after he was robbed of money belonging to the Hungarian Sick and Benevolent Society. The murder number two. 1922. <laughs> Another murder. Elka Graf, the daughter of a well-to-do silk merchant in a fit, cut off her own hand with an industrial shears and then leapt off the fifth floor window. Why even bother with the hand? Uh, yeah. That uh, seems really psychotic. Doesn't it? Or d- and Dylan Thomas was actually living there in 1953 when he drank 18 fatal shots of whiskey at the ni- at the nearby White Horse Tavern. Oh, and you know that crap was not, like, it had no regulation on alcohol. I can't even imagine. At that time, like, ooh. In 1967, Edie Sedwick, high on speed, set her room on fire. That <laughs> sounds like something someone high on speed might do. <laughs> okay. Charles R. Jackson, author of The Lost Weekend, committed suicide there in 1968. And in 1974, Billy Maynard, a photographer who specialized in like glam rock acts and trans performers like the Coquette, was beaten to death in his reign. And you, then I might be jumping ahead. Do you know if this? I could probably just Google it. But was this the hotel that inspired American Horror Story Hotel? I don't know. Possibly because yeah. it sounds like a lot of. I mean, these are all the deaths that have just happened, like, boom, 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 boom. And so this is probably the most notorious death, and it's the Sid, um, the Sid and girlfriend and Nancy Fungeon death. So they were living there in the hotel, and Nancy was fatally stabbed in 1978, and then Sid died of a heroin, a heroin overdose four months later. And there was, like, a movie that came out in 86 called Sid and Nancy. And there's also been, like, books and different things like that. Because they're saying that he killed her. And then they're saying that, no, it was robbery gone bad. And that it was just this whole, and they were both on drugs. And so it's just this huge thing, like, who killed her? And, like, he, like, wanted to be buried beside her. And it's it's just its own thing. It's its own story. But anyway, that happened there at the Chelsea Hotel. In 1989, composer Virgil Thomas, a longtime resident, and club kid Christina Superstar both died there at the hotel. But club kid, damn. <laughs> so by the late 20th century, people were checking into the Chelsea just because of the legends that had died there. Like that kind of put it on its map. Like, oh, this is where so-and-so died. And so that's why one of the reasons why it became so popular in the 20th century. Um, and so what they would, um, so I've just got like, I have all of these just accounts of people that have lived in the hotel that have just kind of given their accounts for things that happened to them while they were there. Mm-hmm. And so an actor, um, Jamie Burke, and I love that he said this. I think it kind of sums up the whole experience and I, I can't say it better myself. So Jamie Burke says, and this is his quote, the Chelsea is a vortex. An artistic tornado of death and destruction and love and broken dreams. Wow. So, whoa, 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 like, that's pretty powerful. So, um, since 2011, the Chelsea has been mostly empty. Um, like we said, a lot of the new owners, um, well, new owners have been slowly renovating. Um, but, um, there are still the people there that are kind of grandfathered in and, um, the ghosts <laughs> that are there <laughs> are still there, apparently. And so, this is where I'm going to kind of get into the specifics here. But a long time, yeah, it's all about the ghost. Um, so a long time Chelsea hotel resident, Brian Vossel, says the best stories are the ones, um, that he would get from folks that were working behind the desk. He said that they always, always had to address and move overnight guests from one room to the next. Like that was just something that happened all the time. Um, he said there was always a guest call on the front desk wanting to change rooms due to something they saw or they felt was completely creepy. That was just something that happened on the regular. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like, when can we book a room? And I checked to see when we could, and they're not taking bookings yet. So, uh, I'm putting know. it on the list. We're going to the Chelsea. 
Um, so there was also, um, they interviewed a night security man named Timmer. And so, um, he told, um, a musician there that a girl named Victoria was dressed and styled herself like Betty Boot and she died of AIDS while living at the hotel. Sometime later, the room's new tenant called Timmer, the night security guard, and said that, um, she had to have her room changed, like, immediately because she looked in the mirror and she saw an image of Victoria staring right back at her with her bangs and everything. So she was like, we have this room. <laughs> Immediately. What room was that? We get um, <laughs> it doesn't say. It doesn't say which room that one is. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm just, uh, so, Ed, so I'm just going to go down all the things. So there's a podcast called Ed Hamilton's Living with Legend, and it's like a Chelsea hotel blog, and it just has all types. The stories of people. So I'm basically just going to read word, like their quotes, like their experience that they had. Um, so we'll start with, um, we'll start with this one. Okay. Start. All right. He just, all right, I'm just going to give you a rundown and then we'll get into the specifics. So, um, so there's like an account of a vain woman that's dressed in Victor- like a Victorian type spirit. A what woman? Huh? A what woman? A Victorian, a very vain Victorian dress woman. Oh, vain. Okay. Vain Victorian dress woman, um, who prints in front of the fifth floor mirror, like that's been accounted many times. There was also a blurry looking apparition that walked right through a bedroom wall that someone experienced. A skeleton in a photograph that wasn't there before. So they take a picture and then they get it developed and there's a skeleton there that wasn't Ugh, that's there. That's just gross. Yeah. Um, and then there was a depressed, I, lo- I love this one, a depression era urchin who hit a woman in the shins and then vanished. He kicked a, a ghost woman or a living woman? Or did he they kicked not a living, oh, the urchin kicked a living woman in the shins and then vanished. Like, <laughs> and I love that they called it a depression era urchin. Like, what is that? What is What's that? Urchin? What is an I urchin? Don't, I don't know, but it's not like a merchant. <laughs> it's a U R C H I N urchin. I'm looking that up. A depression era urchin. Just kick this lady in the shins and then vanish. <laughs> All I see is sea urchin. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like a little, like an octopus looking thing. Like the little things with the spikes. Right. Oh, that would hurt if that kicked you in the shin. But it doesn't have legs. It's it like a goose like, ball. It it's like, like a little, it's just like a goose like ball. ball. And it like kicked her. How did it kick her in the shin? Maybe they meant merchant. Well, or maybe, maybe it was like a satanic picnic. <laughs> well, anyway, this this entity kicked this woman, okay, and vanished. Um, there are also accounts of floating disembodied um, clown heads. That might have been, they said, Dylan Thomas, as well as might have been voice. Dylan Thomas. I don't know. That's as well we as hypnotic vo- voices luring a passerby to enter a a worm like purple ring. <laughs> so can you imagine a voice like trying to get you to to lure you to enter into this worm or womb like purple ring? No, oh, thank you. It's a womb like purple. Ring. What does that? What the? What does that mean? Like I don't know. Somebody's gonna have to draw me a picture. <laughs> yes. There's also been an um a woman near the ice machine. I love this part. Leaking of patchouli and sobbing about her beloved. I love <laughs> patchouli. So this is not. That's what I mean. Like this is my hotel. What is patchouli? <laughs> you like I don't speak English in this episode. Patchouli <laughs> is um it. It's a scent. It's like very hippie smelling. Okay, <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> Is this something Dad would like? Oh yeah, Dad would love patchouli. Okay. Then I think it's I like ate. it's a fragrant. It's very earthy. But okay. anyway, this uh this woman reeked of it, and she was sobbing about her beloved and energy that um quote unquote energy that headed a guest. Uh, or handed a guest a glow in the dark frisbee in room 915. <laughs> That's awesome. I was just talking to Amanda last weekend about how we should get a frisbee 
Oh my god, it's a sign. Like, I love playing Frisbee. I know you and mom do, for sure. I want to go, I didn't, I didn't even think about going in the dark. Well, Frisbee. if you were staying at Chelsea, uh, room number 915. I could have gotten one. Yep, a right. glowing pop one. For free. <laughs> and then this is apparently, um, one of the most popular ghosts, and I love it. Um, and I'm quoting here, his name is Larry, the talkative hipster ghost. A hipster, so he's new. A hipster, a talkative hipster ghost. So it says that you can hear him, um, one hears and reads about many unexplained voices and energies, lights and faucets going on and off, and different feelings of fear, sadness, and a chill at various spots in the hotel. Now, a lot of people, a lot of critics say, okay, well, this hotel was also built in the late 1800s, so it's probably faulty wiring, faulty plumbing, probably not a ghost that, you, that you know, yeah. the light flicker. So a lot of people say that, nah, no, it's probably that. And then I love this part. A lot of people always say that because it's an artsy type place, that there's probably a lot of drug and drink. <laughs> Very true. And, Very and, true. and artistic imagination. So some of the skeptics are like, nah, like you're probably on some drug and these whatever, like hi, like no. And then you just, you are staying in a very old place and you have great imagination. So that's what a lot of a skeptic report. Um, but, uh, <laughs> some people that have lived there are like, absolutely not. These ghosts are absolutely real. And so I'm going to give you, um, one, um, account here of a novelist named Sparkle Hater, which I, what a cool name. <laughs> So Did she says, like, so, hey, I don't know, I don't know, I guess Sparkle could be, I don't know, maybe could be an appearance? Maybe. Something. But Haster, that's her, or him, Sparkle, says that, um, so she occupied a third floor room, and that room had previously, um, been occupied by a drug dealer who was into bestial porn. And had been wanted by the police for imprisoning a woman there. So not cool. And so that couple had moved out. And then another couple moved in after. And he was known to be really domestically violent. And so he and his spouse would get into squabbles. The police would be there a lot. And so um when Haster was out, like for her book tours, or I'm going to call her her because it's powerful. I'm not so ignorant. But I, just, I just looked her up. It is her. It's her. Yeah, if, okay. if a Canadian journalist really Okay, cool. Die. So when she would leave to go on um, book tours, people would say that they could still hear fighting in the apartment after she oh. left. And so neighbors would, um, and the neighbors also said they could hear typing going on inside, and they, like, they knew she was on a book tour. And that's not all. She said that when she was there, she would see a shadow of a crouched woman in a corner of her room late at night, and she would be weeping. And, um, Hader said, um, when she would walk towards the woman, she would disappear. That's really sad. As, yeah. Really, I want really to go sad. help that spirit. Yeah. So, but apparently when she got close, it would just disappear. Now, one of the best known encounters at the Chelsea was reported by Michael and Pirelli of the Sopranos. And he was on, do you remember the show Celebrity Ghost Stories? Yeah, I think, I think so. Like, I think like Loretta Lynn's been on there. There's a ton of people. But he was Aaron on... Carter was even on there. <laughs> I need to watch that one. I, that's I think before one. he got, like, drugged out. That's that's hilarious. Hilarious. I forgot all about him. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, that, that, That's why I was like, wait, is he really a celebrity still to be on the show? Or are they, they kind of like, reaching? Yeah, like, Maybe they're really reaching there, but on um, maybe the Nick, but Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the 2010 uh, celebrity ghost stories, Michael was on there and he talked about living in the Chelsea um, for a couple months around 1996, and um, he said that he encountered a weeping woman in the hallway. And she was dressed in 19th century clothing, and he said that she was hunched over on the floor, just weeping and consolably. And then a light fixture behind him made a popping sound, and then the bulb died. And so um, when he turned to look back, the woman was gone. 
And it wasn't until a few weeks later um, that he spoke to some neighbors in the building. And it's like, have you ever experienced this? Am I going crazy? And they're like, oh, that's Mary. And he said many had seen her. And the war was that Mary was the wife of a Titanic passenger that um, from Buffalo who was staying there to meet her husband when she learned that he died in the sinking ship. Oh, man. Um, and so she, according to the legend, hung herself in her reign. And uh, Michael says that upon hearing that story, he moved out a week later. <laughs> Smart man. He was like, "No, I, no, thank you. I'm not. I'm not doing this." <laughs> I'm all about maybe staying there overnight, but I agree. I wouldn't live there. This is not for me. <laughs> it's just too heavy. Too much baggage. <laughs> I can't do it. So, um, we also have an artist, Jennifer Elsie Shapiro, who reports there was definitely something happening on the tenth floor. She said that she could feel energy, and she had moments where her hair would just stand up, and she knew she had to run and get off that whole floor. Um, she said one time around 1997, her roommate saw a ghost of a man standing in their kitchen in the middle of the night around 2 in the morning. <laughs> I don't like the one. I, I think what is most unnerving to me, and I've never seen a ghost, but I think I'd rather know it's a ghost than it be like a creepy maybe real person like yeah I like I stuff mean, like that where it's just like still, a creepy man in your house yes like absolutely like still a scary thought like just scary to any like especially seeing something like that standing in your kitchen at two in the morning it's like oh so, but ugh. i like i feel better that's a ghost than a living person as well because our grandpa used to always tell us and it's it's something i think is so true it's like be scared of the living not the dead and i think that's yeah. Our, ch- our chances. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was kind All of like right, that. To- You'll always mistake a shadow for a burglar, but never a burglar for a shadow. It's just like a That's so name. true. That's a good one. That's uh those are two words to live by there, Dale. <laughs> that that is from um yeah, what was that from? The God Delusion, I think. Oh, I like Talking that. About, like, I like that. Good. Like like attribution errors is essentially all it is. Right. But, like, there are certain things that humans naturally don't do, and it's usually related to, like, your survival. So, like, you'll you'll never mistake a burglar for a shadow, because that doesn't benefit you to survive. You'll always mistake a shadow for a burglar, because it's better safe than sorry. That's true. Very interesting. Good wisdom there. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so we have another tenant that has been haunted. Lindsay Nobel, an abstract painter, who was one of, um, she's actually in the film that's called Chelsea on the Rock. There are all kinds of films about the Chelsea and all this stuff, so she's actually on there. Um, but she lived in room 507 from 2003 to 2005. And she said that she, okay. <laughs> she had um, been residing there a short time when she was visited by what she was certain was a ghost of William S. Burroughs. She said he was floating above her. When she would breathe in, he would breathe in. I'm like a boo hag. Just gonna. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Mm-mm. But she said that she introduced herself and said, "Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm an artist. I'm gonna be living here. And can you please keep the other ghost out of my room?" And she said, after that, there were no more ghosts. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so. I mentioned before that there's been a lot of renovation going on at this hotel. Yes. Um, Is so, that supposed to stir up activity? Yeah, exactly. And so when it began over the last decade, um, there's a makeup artist uh, that lives there at the Chelsea Hotel. Her name is Melly Hiddington. And she says the disruptions, uh, the disruptions were felt by all of the building's inhabitants, living or not. <laughs> As we know. Um, so she said the ghosts that she encountered were ones that were um, crowded into her apartment as the demolition process began in between 2011 and 2012. She said that she noticed that um, it slowly got harder to do anything in the apartment. The air felt really thick and that she assumed that they were just hiding from the construction. As we know that, you know, usually when you reconstruct old structures, um, a lot of the ghosts don't like that. It makes them really uneasy. And so she said that she also assumed that they were hiding from the construction. 
but they were also getting on her nerves. <laughs> <laughs> which I was. I can't so, focus, guys. Like, guys, this is a small New York apartment. Like, come on now, get off of me. And so she wondered if they had any choice about being there. Like, if they were trapped, like, could they not leave? She didn't know. So, she should have just been like, hey, I'm going to get a keg and we're just going to have a party. <laughs> well, this <laughs> is what she decides to do instead. She says if she were a spirit, she would try to get a better place. This is the hotel reopened. <laughs> and come back after the construction was done. So she did some research and she stuck, so, and she, uh, kind of spoke to the spirit. Um, and she said she did a cleansing ceremony for them to move on to a better place. And she said that she noticed one personality in the bunch, um, which was kind of a guy that was wearing a white beaver, which is just, it's never a good Good sign. Oh, yeah. But she said he was especially invited to leave. <laughs> She's like, you, the wife feeder, you have to go for sure. The rest of you, you can stay. Wife feeder out. <laughs> I wonder if that was the abusive. That's what husband. I'm. That's yeah. what I thought too. It, it doesn't say, but I'm like, I wonder if that's who that was. Um, but she says that she thinks a lot of spirits don't want to be on Earth, but they're also afraid of judgment of their sins in the afterlife, and so they're afraid to move forward and so she just um so she says that she thinks that a lot of them kind of grew up in that era of fire and brimstone kind of religion and um you know she kind of thinks about what a lot of people probably did in hotels like the chelsea and they probably didn't want to move on so she just offered them healing and a better place to to move on and it seemed to help her a lot that's interesting because um i know we always talk about podcasts uh, evidence of the afterlife, but one of, I think she was a medium who was on there. She said that, like, sometimes, she truly believes that, like, some people just don't, like, realize that they're dead. And it can be traumatizing to a ghost. Mm. Yeah. To, like, reveal that to them too quickly. And I've never thought about a ghost being able to have trauma or, like, a cycle, you know. Right. But, I don't really know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine what it's like on their end. If ghosts are real, like what do they think is going on to their home? Like, do is it like the others? Like, do they think maybe like their home is being invaded and they don't realize that they're the one that's dead? Yeah, like this one particular medium thought it was more like the others or um. Was she the Australian medium? No, I think she was a very. But she was my favorite. She's hilarious. She's really good. But she's got a lot of energy. Up. But yeah. yeah, I think it was an American. But I, I've listened. I've like been drunk. But I just remember being like trauma. Like I never. Yeah. That's not realizing that you're dead. Like that would be horrible. You know. Yeah, and like it, I'm like, what's that even like? But exactly. Like, you don't really think about that trauma. Like you just pass on. But you don't know, ever think like, oh, you don't realize that you're not alive. Because so, I guess yeah. the theory is you are just consciousness, then yeah, it makes sense that you could have trauma, but I've just never heard that before. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. It's a scary thought. <laughs> it's very yeah. interesting. Um, this is my favorite encounter, personally, and um, it comes from a celebrity photographer, Lisa Ackerman, who lived at the Chelsea between 2000 and 2013. And her ghost is super unusual because she never knew her personally and she was never human. The was ghost <laughs> that she encountered was her dog, Maggie. Uh-uh. <laughs> um, she said after Maggie died in 2012, she felt her jump up on her bed and plop down at her feet. And when she looked, she didn't see anything. And she said this would happen from time and time until she moved away. I thought that was super sweet. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's keeping all these... It's 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 here, though. Yeah. It seems like a one place, and like hell, yeah, I'm staying here at the shelter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's like, it's like, like a freaking club or something. Listen, if it's in New York City, the ghosts are smelling of patchouli, and it's artistic. That's where I sure as hell would want to stay in the afterlife. I'm just saying, <laughs> Chelsea has Sarah Sellers written all over it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, we even have more. Like, this is just crazy. Like, this is a lot of Hollywood ghosts. And I just, I love, like, what these people do for a living. I'm like, dang, it's so cool. And so this one comes from Alyssa 
Vana Tagera, and I'm so sorry I know I said your name wrong, but she is the producing artistic director of LA's Hero Theater Company and was a okay, Chelsea. You know, just a regular day job. Just, you know, working at the Starbucks. Just, just as normal, you do. Normal yeah. corporate person. Yeah. <laughs> Living in Chelsea, fine. Not a big deal. But she was a tenant there and um she was there when Hurricane Sandy hit in twenty twelve. And so she said that um there were no lights, no electricity, and it felt like a haunted house in there. Um and she said she's a glutton for punishment. So she thought, Hey, you know what? I'm just gonna no take seance. <laughs> Is that where she's going with us? <laughs> okay. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the stairwell and walk to the apartment where um Finn killed Nancy. And she had never been to that floor. And so she thought, you know, she's like, I've spent so many years here. I've never done it. I'm going to do it. And she said it was the most terrifying thing she's ever done. <laughs> um, she I can't decide that it's scarier than a seance. Yeah. She said it, there's definitely something there. She said it was very scary. That's all she says. Um, Cheryl Tippins, another author of the 2013 book Inside the Dream Palace, The Life and Times of New York Legendary Chelsea Hotel. Um, actually did uh um she really wanted to do a, um she wanted to contribute this topic um as she really wanted to investigate like what was going on there but she wanted to look at the ghosts but she wanted to look at the history and just kind of really get a feel for like what the heck is happening here and i really i think this would be a really good book like i want to i can't wait to read it um but so when she said when she first started doing her research at the chelsea She's like, you know, I heard these stories or whatever. She's like, but I, um, I really want to investigate some of these hauntings, even though her book's not just about the hauntings. It's like the history and the hauntings. So, um, she thought what would be interesting for her to do is to check in the hotel with a medium. And which I'm like, that's pretty awesome. That'd be awesome. And th- yeah, I, I was like, what a great place to start. And so Cheryl and, um, who's the author of this book. Um, she checks into the hotel with a medium that she knew and they're like, okay, we're going to, um, we're basically going to take on the ghost situation, see if we have any paranormal experiences. So they are like, okay, we're going to stay together and ring 325, she thinks it was, for four nights and just see what, what happens, if anything. So the medium confirmed that the building was extraordinarily well populated with ghosts, <laughs> as our tenants have said. And she said that they filled the lobby, constantly trying to tell their stories to the people sitting there. She said they linger in the elevator. They ride up and down the floors at night. <laughs> but in their room, um, they crowded around their bed by the dozens while they were sleeping and dressed in clothes from different eras from the 19th century on, anxious to advise um, the writer on how the Chelsea story should be told. So they knew what was going on. They were able to communicate with the medium. They knew Cheryl was writing this book. They wanted to tell her, like, their stories for her book. Oh. And again, like, that book, and I'm going to I'm add in it to my reading list. It's, um, it came out in 2013, and again, it's called Inside the Dream Palace and um, by Cheryl Tippins. And I love that she took, I love that she did this. I love that she took a medium. I was thinking, you, know, you hear all these stories, but I think how cool that they got such a, I don't know, but you got to really feel it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so it goes on. So <laughs> the medium said that there were so many ghosts there, um, that it was really hard for anyone to kind of get a, a word in edgewise because they were all like, you know, hey, pick me up. I got an idea. I got an idea. But she said that, um, one of the ghosts that was definitely the loudest in the bunch was from the 1960s. Um, she guessed just because of the style of the clothes and the way that the ghost was speaking. And it said that um, he pushed in front of the others and he told um, the medium that his name was Larry, which is, I think they got Larry. a not talking to Larry. I feel like he's probably a Lawrence that goes yeah. by Larry, right? Yes, the talk of the pipster. <laughs> or maybe the talk of the, the, talk of the pippy. <laughs> there we go. But he said that he really wanted the point of the story was not the art that was made by the Chelsea, but rather the life that was lived there. And that's what he really wanted to press upon, um, you know, Cheryl for this book. And so, um, <laughs> so the medium said, in quote, Larry says, it's not about the art man, it's about the life. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. But they said to look for a McKinley whose story was very important in the Chelsea history. This is what Larry's telling the medium. And so Cheryl never, she did research, and she never found anything about a McKinley aside from the President McKinley. Um, but Larry, the ghost, advised to inspect the entire hotel um, from the basement where he said a terrible energy remained. And she said that when they did the research, they actually found out that a death did happen in the 1800s there. Um, there was a death that occurred, um, I guess it was a fire that happened on the basement and burned all the way to the roof. So that was before the, the construction of this even began. Because the construction began in 1883. This fire happened in the 1800s. And so, so McKinley wasn't there anymore. I guess they moved on. Uh, but there was still some evil presence in that basement. So, so before the Chelsea was even built. Um, so that was, you know, we, we did our first, like, suicide. It was like 19 something. Like, seems like there's something dark there for sure. Yeah. So before I think any of these suicides that got reported, um, Larry was like, Hey, check the basement because this is before Chelsea was built here. There's some bad energy there. Check the basement, yo. In the basement, dude. <laughs> um, so she, they went ahead. I mean, um, uh, Cheryl and Medium, they explored the entire building and each floor, um, seemed to have a profound emotional experience. Um, they said on one floor, a child ghost kicked her. <laughs> What's up with all the kicking? I know. Oh, maybe um, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't, was an, maybe it was an orphan. Not an urgent. An urgent, maybe. Or maybe they're like, maybe they mean like an urgent, like a, a unruly child. An urgent. Yeah, maybe it was an orphan. I, I don't maybe. know. <laughs> but there was another kicking. The, another kicking like, incident. Another kicking incident. Because that would be um, right for a little kid to kick you in the shins. Yeah. It's probably an orphan. Maybe they're like, yeah. So we're, anyway. Um, this, so they got kicked. Um, she saw an elegantly dressed female ghost, um, eternally arranging her hair before a non-existent mirror. <laughs> so, um. That sounds horrible. I know. On another, um, floor, they, it's just a really gray eminence, just heavy, dark. Um, and they said that they called this, uh, the Chelsea's gray man. Hmm. Cause apparently other people have felt it too. And in the basement, um, she says that they felt overwhelmed by the remnants of a sense of evil. And that's where Larry told them that fire had started. So, mm -hmm. so, um, they said that, um, by the end, so the medium and the author, by the end of their time there were absolutely exhausted. They said they were only there, you know, for the four days and they felt like they had been there for months. It had taken, the energy had taken such a toll on them just from their four night stay. And um, they said when they were riding down to um, back to the apartment, the um, <laughs> she said it was so bright, it was so light outside, and they said they thought they were just in another world, like that, you know, that the Chelsea was like this separate world that existed. Weird. Gosh. Um, yeah. The medium said that she would never ever want to go back to that place again. <laughs> she just. Jeez. She described it as more haunted than any building she had ever encountered, except for the New York Public Library on 42nd Street. Now I want to go to both of those places. How do you think, um, I'm not seeing a New York City trip in our future. I, I guess I, that's the only thing that will get me to go to New York. Just yes. Things. You'll love I've York. never had an interest in going to New York or L.A. The mm -hmm. only thing that can get me out there would be ghosts. I love New York City so much. I even lived in freaking Chicago, so it's not like I, I know. City. You gotta go in the city. <laughs> but like, there's just something I just about never it. I wanted to go. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm such a fan. You know. Right, I'd rather go to New York for LA. LA is like the last city I want to go. Love New York City. No offense LA, it's just like not my thing. I can't say enough, um, wonderful things about New York City. There's just something magical about it. But I think you either love it or you hate it. There's like, I've never met anybody that's like, me, it's okay. It's either like, yes, or like, no. <laughs> I, am definitely like Bet Midler on Big Business well, New York. <laughs> and it might be more you, like Lily Tomlin. <laughs> listen, whenever me and Steven went to New York City, like we we wore like our nicest clothes like to go out and stuff and we felt like fucking rain from Big Business. <laughs> I was like, 
yeah. we're not enough. <laughs> we are like even like you could just you could just smell the southern on us. <laughs> it was <laughs> like <laughs> not we're, we're not worthy. We can't go into this. We can't go into this club. We wouldn't even try. We were like no. no. As an aside, like just moving from the Carolinas, even like around the city to Chicago, but not only to Chicago, but to Boys Town, I instantly was like, uh, I need to go buy some new clothes. Like, you feel like trash, don't you? You're like, oh, God. And I remember, like, going to a restaurant, and I'm like, I have a water. Like, what kind of water? And I had, like, a hundred different choices. I'm like, like H2O. Water. Oh, but I love it. It's amazing. And there were so many people that had moved there from South Carolina, which I thought was so funny. Um, because obviously they heard the accidents are like, and I had a, you know, I bank at Founders, which, hey, Founders, <laughs> great bank. <laughs> and so the sign, their symbol is Founders Cotton. And so I, when we had our cards, you know, we would pay. And, founders Cotton. I know, but like when we play with our, our stuff, this one guy's like, Founders Cotton. I was like, yes. He's like, I'm from Spartanburg. <laughs> like, you would just be so many people because of our Founders Cotton card. <laughs> That's like our uh, Jewel Osco bags, because it's like a local grocery store in Chicago. So, oh, oddly enough, there's a lot of people from Chicago in Albuquerque. That, I remember you saying that. Oh, and they're always like, oh, the Jewel. The Jewel. <laughs> it's just funny, you know? It really is. I was just like, I cannot believe that my founder's cotton card, like... <laughs> so, were you a little bit embarrassed, like, hang with it? Like, oh, God. Even my credit no. card has cotton on it. <laughs> I mean, I never really thought about it. <laughs> never really thought about it's it. Like, this would be like Jupiter Hollow. It's, it is. And if you don't know what we're referring to, it's only the best movie ever. Big Business, Lily Tomlin. It, it is on Disney Plus right it's now. Like, Go watch it. Go watch it. And um, whenever they, when the country bumpkins go to New York City, that's how yours truly felt. <laughs> <laughs> And I even acted like, I was like, oh, yeah. No, every time, I know we've got a whale, but every yeah, time we, we watch that movie, and it shows, like, Matt Hitler, like, first getting to New York, and it's like that music, it's like, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, that always makes me think of Sarah. <laughs> and she's just all like, oh, look at all the buildings. Like that, yeah, that's me, all the way. Like, I, Stephen was like, we're going to get pickpocketed, like, for sure. So I'm like, it's just the yeah. I've ever been <laughs> That was me. Like, I was crying. I was like, it's just <laughs> We, yeah, we, we kind of stuck out there. So, I had a ball. Love it. Love New York. Coming back for you, Chelsea. It's going to happen. I'm bringing Adele with me. Like, like, ghost, you better show up, though. Because I'll be like, you took my ass all the way to New York, where I didn't want to go, and I didn't even see any ghosts. Are you going to um, be like, rain and order some sushi, and be like, can you put some fire under this, hun? <laughs> oh, I use this as bait. I like that kimono. Did you get it in there? <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where we just start quoting movies. Yeah, so, okay, we'll knock it off. We'll knock okay, it off. Okay, two more paragraphs. Hang in there okay. with me, okay? All right, so back to Cheryl and the medium. So Cheryl said that was it. She went on with her other research. She wrote her book based on what she could confirm. And the time spent with the medium was mostly for fun. But she said she had zero regrets doing it. And it gave her a really unique view of how so many people experience that hotel and the living and thereafter. Well, so that really went fun. It sounds like the medium didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, I, I... That medium got no sleep and probably was so hard. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. I wonder, um, I wonder if mediums can play like they're not mediums. Like, like well, Dad says you can't turn it off and spirit can't you. hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, it is a gift, after all, I guess. It is. You know, it comes with a price. No sleep yeah. for you. <laughs> so, um, there's also, I've got just one more um, tale here from a resident. Um, who was a scholar writer and part-time resident, Amanda Chimichi, did her Yale, did her Yale thesis on the Chelsea and is now working on a book called The Ghost of the Chelsea Hotels. This is book number two. Yeah. And she says that, um, she looks at ghosts as a metaphor for the many people who lived and died in the building over its 100 plus year history. She says she looks at ghosts as a metaphor for trauma, 
and talk about trauma embedded in the architecture of that building. True and true. Um, and then she goes on, and I'll end up with this, because I think she wraps it up so beautifully. Amanda says, there is undoubtedly as much psychology as parapsychology at work in the old um, hotel. One thing is for certain, whether walking among artists or the ghost of artists, it would be wise to tread carefully. Wow. So that is the Chelsea Hotel. What that means, like, don't piss them off or don't even try to make contact. Exactly. Well, you guys are talking about Because you know our asses are going to go in there with the EMF detectors and spirit we're, boxes. We're going to go in there like friendly Zach Vegas. I'm like, we're here. Talk I mean, we're not, we'll, we'll, we'll be more like Lydia Deeds. Like, yeah, we're more okay. of a Lydia Yes, like, we want to be I can see you. <laughs> exactly. Okay, to point, you're really dead. What happened? Listen, <laughs> we'll be like big business and Lydia combined. Yeah. I'll be the one that's just like, I'm going out and take <laughs> Yeah, and I'll be like, can you give us a tip somewhere to go eat? Yeah, exactly. Do they have a good vegan restaurant? Be, yes, like, I want to know all the things. I think it sounds like a freaking blast. And, I mean, I've been to Chelsea, like, the area, and it's beautiful. And I would definitely love to stay at this place. I think it would be – and I think it would be kind of cool to go now that it's, like, kind of vacant right now. Like, Yeah, I wonder why they aren't accepting – It's still under it's construction. still under construction. Okay. And there's a lot of drama with it, apparently. And I didn't really get into that. I just wanted to stick with the ghost. But apparently there's a lot with, like, the current tenants and the new owners, there's a lot of turmoil there. Uh-oh. Um causing a lot of it. I'm not sure. I, I kinda skimmed but I didn't really I wanted to stay on the path. Yeah. Haunting. Yeah. So there seems to be a lot of turmoil there. Um so I think it's all I am like, I just want to go on to the like book the rain and you couldn't book yet. So Okay. So that kinda stinks. Um because I definitely want to go. And it's just if you Google it Definitely, Adele did when we first started the podcast. It is beautiful. It's yeah, absolutely it's really cool. a beautiful structure, and um, I think it would be so cool to to go. And I can't believe like it's all the all the stories from the tenant. You know, like that's a lot of accounts. What What made you pick this hotel out of all the ones in New York? So here's the funny thing: I, I was originally going to do the Biltmore Estate in North Carolina. That's Which, where um, Amanda's dad proposed to her mom. Really? Well, oddly enough, it's not that haunted. I was really disappointed. So um, it is the owner, the guy that originally built it, his ghost is there, his wife, and a headless cat. I'm like, that's it. Headless cat? Yeah. And so that I was like, that's not going to be enough to pull a podcast. So I just started Googling, like, most haunted places in America. And then Chelsea popped up. And I was like, ooh, New York City. and I just, I'm like, that's it. Like, this okay. is it. So. I didn't know if you had, like, I don't know, walked into the lobby or something. I, I wonder if they let you do that because the Congress in Chicago is supposed to be really haunted. But in the lobby, they have, like, a really cool, like, like 1920s kind of bar. Oh, yeah. It's kind of in that style. And yeah, I remember, so you can, like, come and have a drink or whatever. Yeah, I remember going there for a few drinks after work with um, some of my buddies. And you could just, I don't know if you're supposed to, but we just walked around the hotel yeah. and started just opening doors and like looking at places. Cause like was, maybe like, not it. that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did. I know like there was a restaurant here. Were, think, you lost. <laughs> you know, there's a restaurant that was here and I think that, um, there are other restaurants that, um, are supposedly supposed to be coming in bars. And I think that, that you don't have to be like a guest to go to those. But I think you're just like limited to like the lobby. Like one of um one of my other favorite places that I've ever been is Salem, Massachusetts, which I'm really going to be getting to Salem. We're going to be doing some two parters to Salem. Um, but we stayed at the um hum the haunted Hawthorne Hotel, as I call it, and it is you could feel it. Like it felt just it was such a crazy vibe. And we talked to a lady there, and um she was the housekeeper, and like any crazy stuff happened. She's like. I hate one or two basements. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> oh, would she let you go down there? Ah, no. Well, Stephen didn't ask. We'll have to go back and I'll ask. They're going back. But they have a really cool bar and restaurant in there. People would just come and eat there all the time and drink. And it was, I mean, it was just such a cool lobby. Like, it was just cool. It was kind of like very 20 feeling to you. Yeah, and there was cool. a wedding there that we went to. Like, hey. <laughs> I think we need to go to Gettysburg as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
And I, I think I have a haunted um, row house for us to stay in. That would be so, awesome. Damn. So. Damn. And it's crazy because of the Hawthorne, it smells like apples because it was originally a part of Bridget Bishop's apple farm and she was the first witch that they, well, he wasn't a witch, but she was And the if first you couldn't person. see, she did air quotes. <laughs> yeah, I did air quotes. But not she disrespect forced. Bridget Bishop. <laughs> I, listen, I love some Bridget Bishop. She was not a witch, but she was the first one um, that was hung or not um, for it. So um, they say that's a part of the curse is that that hotel always smells like apples and it does. It's, it's crazy. It's that's awesome. That's a hell of a curse. That's kind of yeah. nice. <laughs> I know, but I mean, I don't know if it's really part of like a curse, curse, or just like you know, just like, like oh, you're always gonna remember Bridget. That's right. It's a Salem. Like, I I can't say enough great things about New York City or Salem, Massachusetts. Love them, not in the winter, but I do love them <laughs> any other time of the year. <laughs> but I definitely would love to go hang out with Chelsea. I think that would just be. I mean, all of those accounts, like that's a lot. So, and I mean, there are a lot. I mean, <laughs> books that I reference there, but I mean, there are movies about it. There are songs about it. Like, um, Velvet Underground wrote a song about the Chelsea. Bob Dylan, I think, wrote, um, some songs at the Chelsea. Well, that's um, weird because that's the Dylan Dylan challenge that I was talking about. That is about. weird. That is um, weird. It was Dylan Thomas and Dylan Dylan. It's, I'm, I don't even hmm. like this movie, but it makes me watch it so much. So in Dangerous Minds, you know, it's like Michelle Pfeiffer goes into yeah. like high school with all these bad kids. And she's like, Is that what inspired Thomas, Amanda Huber? If you can find a Dylan Thomas poem that's similar to a, a Bob Dylan song and tell me how they're similar, then you won the Dylan Dylan Challenge. Oh, but that's Dylan, weird that they have that connection. I don't even know if they do that when they put that in the movie. Dylan Dylan definitely has a connection here at the Chelsea Hotel, so... Very yeah, easy. so that's see, mm-hmm. that's a synchronicity, which mm-hmm. might be a future topic. Yes, that is so true. But yeah, I mean, it's just check it out, guys. And if you, um, any of our listeners have ever been to the Chelsea, tell us about it. I want to know about your experience. If you've ever been there, um, have you experienced any paranormal activity there? Because it seems to be rolling with folks. I mean, it seems like you can't even get a reservation there in the afterlife. Yeah. We're just booked. We're just booked. It's like, yeah. I'm thinking about Beetlejuice again. It's like, we're booked. We'll check in. They never check out. <laughs> hey, damn good time to tell me. But that's my story for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that's awesome. One more, one more thing Super to add. Wanted. Yes, I just can't believe all the accounts, you know. And It's definitely uh, a bucket list location. Chelsea Hotel or the Chelsea or the Hotel Chelsea. What have you? Well, I'm starting to see <laughs> like uh uh, Stormy Willow tour. Easter tour. Yeah. Take one. Because yeah. we can hit up Mackey's and then on our way to Salem on our way to New York. Haunted road trip. Here we come. Wouldn't that be so fun? We just That'd hit them cool. all. Start yeah. in Kentucky and just keep on. Yeah. <laughs> so we just have to start like mapping out places in between. We do. Yes. I love that. It's like 2022 East Coast or East Coast Ghost Tour, East Coast Ghost, and then we can like the Midwest and then the West and then maybe then you know we can even do like world yeah. tour. If you could yeah, <laughs> have to go in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that in the summer. <laughs> and just wait for our European tour. <laughs> just wait, we're coming. We're coming for you. <laughs> coming. Yeah. So. That is the Chelsea. I, um, one more, one more reason to love New York. Cool. Me. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, I've never heard of that hotel. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea. So if it, I mean, the Jane was definitely eerie. So this one sounds like even more. <laughs> so yeah, this one sounds like really great. Like if you stay there, you will probably experience something. You're probably yeah. It sounds like it's a very good possibility, and especially now that guys are pissed about the renovations. Yeah, like there's nowhere for them to go, so they're just probably going to be in bed with you. <laughs> yeah, hanging out with you. <laughs> just be not to take showers. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, you're or, just, or just be gross while you're visiting. <laughs> like, everybody close your eyes. I have to go take a towel. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm still alive. It's part of nature. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, add it to your bucket list, friends. Yeah. Chelsea. 
the Chelsea. All right, but not the well, Marriott. <laughs> not not the Chelsea Marriott. <laughs> if you start looking and you see like Marriott or like something like that, that was not like Chelsea. <laughs> just, I did that when I was like researching. I was like, wait a second, and I started looking, and I saw like this gym and like not Applebee's, but something like Applebee's, and I was like, a jacuzzi. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, did they? Is this what they redid? Like, this is how they redid it. How Marriott? And then I was like, the ghost are mad. <laughs> I was like, oh wait, no, that's the wrong hotel. It's the right hotel. So you got to be careful when you're punching in that because it makes sure it's like the structure that you're looking for because you'll get. All kinds of random like holiday inns and stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's not, that's not, fun. I'm not saying they're not haunted, but it's not the one we're talking about. Hotel Chelsea or Well Chelsea. Right. You gotta be hit with one, guys, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. That was a good topic. And um, okay. I'll, I'll be, I still have picked out my next topic, but I have a few floating around, so. Yeah, and you have a few extra days since I won't be here this weekend, so. Yeah, it's streaming this weekend. I can just start. Researching a few at the same time, honestly. There's so many. So many. So much to cover. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed this story. And, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We're on Instagram. All of the ways to contact us are on stormywillow.com. And if you have any ideas for a topic that you would like for us to cover, just uh, get in contact. Or if you have a personal story you would like for us to share, um, just let us know. Yeah, like so, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, stay curious and stay safe. That's right. Bye, you guys. Bye.